All right. I thought I'd uh, put a video up about a comparison between two quadcopters. The one on the left here is a Hong Kong uh, sourced quadcopter, as you can see, and the one on the right is the one that I recently just finished, or I should say almost finished, um, is the Mini Quad Bros uh, kit, the pretty much the, the base kit. So I thought I'd, uh, you know, a lot of people are out there wondering, you know, should I go for the cheap Chinese one, or, or should I, you know, maybe go with one in the U.S. that's a little bit more quality. Um, so I thought I'd just create this video to talk about some of my observations between differences to help you decide. So the first thing I noticed is, um, I'm going to start off with the frame. So the Hong Kong kit that I ordered, and, and I'll have a link um, in the video or down below in the comments. Um, the frame is pretty much, uh, it's very similar, but you know, it is a little bit, uh, the, this particular frame is true carbon fiber. Um, the one with the, the base mini quad bros kit is actually, I think it's like a hybrid, uh, you know, glass, fiberglass carbon fiber, so I'm not exactly sure what it is, but um, I did do a continuity test, and the, the one from Hong Kong, you know, does have continuity between the layers, so it's, it's true carbon fiber. Um, I did notice that, you know, the holes on the frame were pretty easy. All the screws went in, including the motor screws. Um, you can see on the bottom, you know, the screws are in pretty well. You can also see, um, you know, pretty much everywhere. Um, you can't really see these, but I have screws going into my 3D printed landing skids here. Those went in pretty easy. And on the Mini Quad Bros kit, um, I had a lot harder time with the screw holes, mostly th these ones here where I put my landing gear on, I had to drill those out because the M3 screws would not fit in there. Um, I also, as you can see, the I had to use these little washers um, to, mount the, or to mount the motors uh, to the frame. Not a big deal, um, and, and they're actually linked on the page, so it's no surprise there. Uh, these holes here where I mounted to the frame, those were also, um, you know, not exactly lining up, so I had to drill those a little bit. So um, the nice thing is, though, you can you can upgrade on, you know, you can upgrade to the true carbon fiber frame. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference in terms of, you know, applying it and overall uh, just stability. I think uh, they're pretty much the same. They're both really tough frames, so not a, not a big deal. Certainly not a showstopper. So the next thing um, that I want to talk about were the ESCs. Um, over here on the Hong Kong kit, you can see, uh, actually you can't really see, but if I move the zip tie, it's down pretty hard. These are 12A, just generic 12A Simon K uh, firm, uh, firmware ESCs. They're pretty big. Um, and if you look at the Mini Quad Bros kit, you can see that you know these suckers are pretty small. They're also uh, more a little more headroom in the ESCs. They're 20, 20 amp versus the 12 amp. So, you know, you're getting a lot more headroom there. Um, the other thing that you can't really tell here is how these are uh, wired up. Um, I was actually going to do a direct solder onto these, but the, the there's three different spots. There's like one here where they connect. There's one in the middle and one at the end. So um, it was just kind of uh, you'd have to have three different wire links wiring up your motor. So that would have been kind of annoying so I just decided to shorten the wires um, worked out fine um, over here the uh, BL helis that are on here um, they're DYS ESCs I believe but um, they've they've got the newer firmware on it um, it supports the, the um, what is it called the one shot 125 and damp light so um, kind of more advanced firmware definitely more cutting edge as you can see, I also have the bullet connectors on here, but those are eventually going to come off, and I'll probably do a direct solder. The nice thing is, is that you know the solder points are all going to be right here, so they're very easy to access. And uh, if you screw one up, you don't have to, you know, scrap your motor because you had too short of a wire, like you would over here. So ESCs definitely uh, the Mini Quad Bros kit uh, wins there. Um, the motors are the next thing. So the motors are pretty much uh, about the same size. These are Emax 1806. They're uh, 2280 kV, and these are um, 
I think they're also B <coughs> DYS motors, 1806, 2300 KV, so, you know, a little bit more room on there as well. The one thing that, um, that I, on the Hong Kong kit over here is that I, at least based on the seller's description, they only support 3S, so there's not as much, you know, if you want to do a 4S motor, you're not going to be able to do that with this particular kit. So I think the, you know, one of the themes here is that just with the components from the Mini Quad Bros kit, you're going to see that, you know, they're higher quality components overall and there's more room to grow. And certainly if you want to do, you know, a 4S battery down the road, which, which I certainly will once I get a little more comfortable. So it's nice having that ability to upgrade. So the next consideration is the flight controller. And over here you can see I've got, um, it's a CC3D flight controller. And on the Mini Quad Bros kit, I've got a Naze 32. It's a little bit of a rat's nest in there, um, but I, I just haven't had that chance to, you know, really clean up the wires. So the there's a couple different considerations when it comes to the flight controller, at least in, in my opinion. So I, I actually prefer the CC3D, at least as a beginner, because um, it's very easy to set up with the Open Pilot software. Um, it takes you through a wizard, and you basically, it's pretty hard to screw up. Um, you know, you, you set your, uh, you know, you go through all the steps, and it doesn't even matter how you plug in your ESCs or your, um, or your uh, transmitter, radio transmitter, or a radio receiver, because it's all, it's all pretty much driven by the wizard. Now, the, the flight controller with the Mini Quad Bros kit is definitely more powerful, and it has more features on it, so... It does have uh, basically a, the ability to detect the battery voltage. You just have to wire. Can't really see here, but let me flip it around. But um, you can see I've got it. Uh, one of these is wired to the PDB, so the battery feeds into the PDB, and then the PDB feeds into the battery um, jumper here, and then that's what allows you to detect the voltage. And right next to that is an alarm that you can put on there. So. And the, uh, the one of the features of the naze is that if you if your battery gets below a certain point, you know it's going to beep at you. And and yet another feature is that you can um, on your transmitter. I've got mine set up here where if I flip one of these switches, it's going to let me uh, beep the uh, the buzzer. So that way, you know if I let's say I lose it in a tree or something, um, I'll be able to find it a lot easier. And and there's there's definitely no features like that on the CC3D, at least not that I'm aware of. So I definitely, um, I think the, the trade-off is you get a lot more features and power um, with the NACE 32, but it's also um, <coughs> the op the uh, base flight software, in my opinion, is definitely more advanced and uh, it takes a little bit more to learn how to use that. All right, so a couple of other things that are worth mentioning. Um, just rotate these so you can see the full view. So one one of the things is I've added some FPV gear over here on my Hong Kong kit just because I've I've had it for a while and you know I've been playing around with with that. So I, I have not added that yet to the Mini Quad Bros kit, but I will definitely do that. Um, I should have plenty of room. I tend to get creative with my mounting. So uh, here I've got the video transmitter underneath. This was um, something I you know I got later. Same thing with the camera. I'll probably get a different camera. As you can see, I had to add some uh, standoffs just so I can have a little more room to mount it. Eventually, you know, I'll probably take this camera out of the case and and do like a 3D printed uh, case in there so I can lower that again. But uh, in terms of room, you know, I've I've got plenty of room on really on both, especially if I clean up my wires a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people tuck them in their frame or whatever it may be. I don't really mind them kind of hanging in there, but um, so just something to think about. I thought I'd just do a quick little, uh, you know, weigh the, the two quads. It's not really an apples to apples comparison, but it is what it is because this one's got FPV on it. So throwing this one on here, I'm right at 502, which I think is good for doing FPV. You know, you want to be right around 500. Um, over here without FPV, um, I'm at 480. So it's probably going, just because I've, I've also got a bigger... I've got a Turnigy 9XR um, receiver on here, so I've got a few things that are a little bit bigger. Um, I've also got more wires 
with the bullet connectors those are probably a good 20 25 grams that, that are going to come off eventually so I'll probably end up they'll probably end up being about the same weight so I don't think there's much of a difference there so last but least I think um, some of the there's a lot of qualitative considerations that you're going to want to consider um, yeah, when you uh, make a decision on which kit to get I think um, you know probably the the biggest one with the Hong Kong kit over here, I, I ended up having to buy a lot of extra things. Um, that includes like a nylon standoff kit, which I, I've got here. I also had to buy um, a different PDB, power distribution board. Um, the one that it came with was too big for the quad, and I, I'm not sure why they, they sell those but you know with the kit, but they do, at least the particular seller that I bought from. Um, and then they actually had it zip tied to the frame, which I thought was pretty tacky. So I just went ahead and, you know, ordered a different one. And then, um, so qualitatively, you know, I think, and the other thing is, is, uh, probably the biggest one is that the, there's no instructions with the Hong Kong kit. Um, and actually, actually I take that back. There are instructions, but they're, uh, they're basically written in either Chinese or, or English. So it's really hard to understand the directions. Um, I, I actually ended up watching the Mini Quad Bros video to help build this one um, because you know I I just wasn't able to really glean anything from the directions. Um, so anyway, that's that's another huge reason that you'd want to consider the Mini Quad Bros kit. You know the the video is great. It pretty much takes you through every step of the way, including you know after you've built it through the software, which I, again, found very helpful. Um, <clears throat> so I think the other thing is, is that, you know, from a qualitative perspective, the many Quad Bros guys are regular contributors of, of Reddit and other communities. And, uh, you know, you're going to be able to get a hold of them. If you're in the U.S., you can get a hold of them really quickly. And uh, I had uh, one particular issue where one of my motors was, um, it looked like it was stuttering a little bit and uh, I'm not quite sure why but when I had it at a very low setting when I was testing it um, and I emailed uh, Zach about it and he got back to me I think within maybe a half hour of my email and uh, I was pretty amazed by that and he offered to you know to make it right if, if it was indeed a problem with with the component turns out it wasn't even really an issue um, after I changed motors you know it, it seemed to be fine I just reseated the bullets and and uh, tested everything out and you know did a quick little test flight and it seems fine but it, it's just cool that you know that that we've got uh, with many quad bros you've got really good customer service and the ability to get a hold of these guys you know very quickly so um, last but not least uh, is the price so that's probably the one you know the one area that you're gonna maybe save a few bucks on um, but after you add the uh, the extra shipping costs and you know maybe some of the extra parts, you're probably looking at maybe 130 to 140, maybe even 150 um, with all the things that you're going to need to buy. And, and there's also just the hassle uh, and the time factor of you know oh I, I didn't realize I needed this and you know having to get that. So that that's a little frustrating. But you know bottom line is you are going to save a little bit of money. <clears throat> so over here, you know for everything you see minus the the battery and the um, the radio transmitter, everything's included, and you're going to get that for 169. You're you're really not going to have to buy anything additional um, except the same thing you would need over here, which would be the you know the radio and the transmitter. So, all right. Well, overall, you know, I got to say, hands down, Mini Quad Bros kit is the way to go. Um, I would definitely recommend that. So hopefully you found my video useful and this will help you make an educated decision. Thanks.